Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. If any visitors are here, special welcome to you. Our theme uh, for the Lent season is Lent, a Lent un journey. Our un word for this morning, uh, Pastor Nessa will preach on, and that you'll sense and see in the scripture and the hymns is unloved. Sometimes we feel unloved in this world, but we know that uh, through Jesus, God's love is so extravagant for us if we just see it and realize it. So again, welcome to worship today. We begin with our confession and our forgiveness. Print that in your bulletin or on the screens. I invite you to stand. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us take a moment of silence to bring our sins and our burdens to the Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing, Guide Me, Ever Great Redeemer. Together, let us pray the prayer of the day. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing. 
that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to call, come the, uh, call the kids to come forward. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me. today. Good. Today, we're going to have a story um, that's going to involve a big word that you guys might know. So we're going to learn a new word today. It's anointing. Can you say that with me? Anointing. Have you any of you ever heard that word before? Anointing? Yeah. Do you know what it means? Exactly. Yep. You pour you pour, specifically in the Bible, when anointing means to pour oil on somebody. Have you ever had someone pour oil on you? That sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? So, yeah, <laughs> sounds kind of sticky and messy, right? Um, so that was in Jesus' day, and even before then, uh, they had a practice of they would pour oil on someone as a symbol of God's favor and God's love. It was a special thing that happened. Um, so it was often something like there would be perfume, so it would be oil that smelled uh, really good and really special. So this was something that people would do um, to show how much God loved them. Now, have you guys heard the word Messiah? Have you heard that word? I think you sing that song in Sunday school. Messiah. Have you sung that song in Sunday school? No? Okay. Yeah, they, they have. They just, I'm probably doing it poorly. Um, so Messiah is another word that we call Jesus. And Messiah means anointed one. Um, that God has chosen and anointed Jesus to be the Savior of the world. Um, so... Anointing is something that seems a little bit weird, right? We don't normally pour oil on each other. But anointing is something we still do. And I would guess that many of you were anointed at your baptism. What do we usually put on, on people when they're baptized? Water. Yep, we pour water on them. I don't have water in here right now, but I will. <laughs> um, the other thing that we do that you might not always notice is that we put oil on people we anoint with oil so this is what we use I'm going to show you guys this is the oil is there very much oil in here no just a little bit just a little bit it's it's sort of regular oil you might have oil kind of like this in your kitchen for cooking with um, um, but we use this oil to um, we, we mark the cross on somebody's forehead so I take a little bit of oil and I would go like this with it. Have you seen us do that at a baptism before? Mark the cross of Christ. Have, we ever, have you ever gotten a blessing like that some other time too? Sometimes we like to have parents do that. Or when you come up for communion, one of the pastors might give you a blessing. Not so much in the last two years. but um, <laughs> um, And we do that. We put some oil. We don't pour a whole lot of oil, do we? Not anymore. Um, but we put a little bit of oil in the sign of a cross as a way of anointing, of reminding people that God loves them, that God chose them, that we are made for something special to follow Jesus. So today, if you guys are okay with it, I'm going to come around and make a cross on each of you um, with just a tiny bit of oil to remind you that God loves you and God has chosen you. All right, so you can let me know. You can, you're allowed to tell me no. Can I give you a blessing? You are a child of God. And Decker? Is it okay if I give you one? You are a child of God. Are you good? You are a child of God. And Kira, you are a child of God. Grant, you are a child of God. And Dean, you are a child of God. Asher, can I make a cross on your forehead? 
You are a child of God. Sydney, do you want one too? You are a child of God. Hi, Kennedy, can I make a cross on your forehead? You are a child of God. Tyler, you are a child of God. And one for Pastor Paul, just for good measure. You are a child of God. So you can remember that whenever you see us make a cross on someone at their baptism, that it's a way of God saying, I love you. That you can give a blessing like that to your moms and dads, your grandmas and grandpas, to your siblings, to your friends. When you receive that blessing at communion, today we'll have communion. And when you come forward with your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and whoever you come forward with, you can get a blessing like that as a reminder um, that God has chosen you and God loves you. So when you hear that big word anointing today in our story, you can remember that it means God blesses us and loves us and chooses us for something big. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you for anointing us to follow you. Help us to share your love in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, you guys. You can head on back to your seats. And at this time, we will hear the word of the Lord. The first reading is from Isaiah 43, 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand if you are comfortable for the gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Now, I read this story of Mary anointing Jesus' feet as one of extravagance. And I don't know about you, but I am not a very extravagant person in my life. We don't have a lot of fancy things. Um, Tim and I got married in 2008, 
and moved into our first apartment about a month later. And when we moved into our apartment, we bought a couch for $15 at Goodwill. And almost 14 years later, if you walk into my living room, do you know what you will see? That same $15 Goodwill couch. There's a few, you know, spots we've sewn and whatever. It's, a, it's, in, it's in rough shape. But we have that same couch. That's like a dollar a year. Like, talk about value for your money, right? Um, we are not extravagant people. And I think part of the reason that that's how Tim and I are is because we grew up in places that, like, people weren't extravagant. He grew up in southeast Alaska. Like, people wear rubber boots to, like, fancy occasions, right? I grew up in the Midwest. <laughs> and especially in places like Chapville, like a small town in the Midwest, like, culturally, we are not extravagant people. We have been told to be, you know, we're very restrained. You know, we don't like make a big deal about things. You know, we might have like nice stuff, but we're not gonna be showy about it, right? We're not gonna make a big deal about the nice things that we have. We're not extravagant overall as a people. And so this story is a little bit outside of my comfort zone. And I think maybe for some of us as well, because Mary is very extravagant in this story. She spends a lot of money on costly perfume, this, you know, precious oil, and then she dumps it on Jesus' feet. And then the extravagance of attention and love. Like, a lot of us, like, also, like, a Midwestern, like, we don't want people to make a big deal about us, right? Like, like, you know, it might be your birthday, but like, I don't, you know, I don't want to party. Like, you know, we don't need a big fuss made. And Mary makes such a big fuss about Jesus. She lavishes attention and love upon him extravagantly. Now, after Mary does these things, Judas disagrees. He points out how wasteful this extravagance is. Couldn't we have taken this money instead and given it to the poor? Now, we get the note in scripture that, like, Judas is saying this out of, like, selfish purposes, right? He doesn't care about the poor people. He wants the money for himself, right? But, like, we kind of agree with him. Not because we want to, like, steal money, right? But, like, we kind of agree that this is wasteful, right? Like, we hear this, and it's like, that's a lot of money that she's literally pouring out on the ground. Like, there's part of us, this non-extravagant part of us, that's like, it is kind of wasteful. And, like, we know we shouldn't agree with Judas because, like, he's Judas, but, like, we agree with Judas a little bit. It's okay. For some of us, extravagance seems really weird. Maybe even bad. We've learned restraint. To focus on what's necessary in life. And we don't need all these extra fancy bits and bobs. Just what's necessary. And yet, while I think a big part of our culture is about restraint rather than extravagance. We do know how to be extravagant about things that matter to us. We live in a place that we call Bandtown, USA. Throughout the summer, we have hundreds of people gather for concerts in the park every Thursday. Do you know what's not necessary for life? Music. Right? Like, we don't literally need music in order to continue living. Music is extravagant. I have a good point. Like, bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> That's what life sounds like without music. Right? Music is extravagant. And yet, it, it, because it's, but it's so good and so worthwhile to spend our effort and our money and our care like, we as a community are spending, like, millions of dollars. I don't know the actual budget, so, like, don't quote me on this. But, like, we're spending, like, millions of dollars to work on building a center for the arts in our community to lift up music and art and theater and things that aren't essential but bring so much meaning and value and love and worth to our community. We are extravagant in the ways that we are lifting up a love of art and music in our community. A couple weeks ago, we had the Luther College Jazz Ensemble meet, like, literally right here. We had probably 150 people in this room to be there and to celebrate this. It was a lot of work for a lot of people for them to come and be here. It was extravagant and so worth it. It turns out I think we can be 
extravagant like Mary, in the things that are important to us, the things that bring us love. So maybe a little bit of extravagance in our life is good. Now I hear the part of you that's going, really, really, Pastor Anissa, you're going to tell us like it's good to be extravagant. Like really you want us to spend our money on like designer clothes and luxury cars and like five-star restaurants like instead of the offering plate? Well, no, that's not quite what I'm saying. <laughs> because Mary's extravagance wasn't about things for, based on their monetary value, right? The extravagance isn't based on how much things cost. For Mary, her extravagance was started in love. Now, she wasn't showing Jesus how much she loved him by saying, look at how much money I spent. It started with the love. Because she loved Jesus so much, it was worth it to her to take that money to show him that way of loving. Love came first. And then the money felt worth it because of that love. And Mary wasn't only showing Jesus love based on the expense of the, of the perfume. She was also showing him love and extravagance through the attention, through the love that she put on him. Mary's extravagance was also selfless. And I think that's a key part of this story. That it wasn't for everybody to look at her and be like, look at me, look at how, how rich I am and how much I can afford this fancy perfume and how, what a great disciple I am. We see her selfless love and it's contrasted where other places in the, in the Gospels where like James and John are like, hello, put us at your right and left hand. Like that's not a selfless thing that they're doing. But Mary's act of extravagance is selfless. It's about Jesus, about showing him love. I also would point out that part of Mary's extravagance is in the way that she understands. <laughs> um, the disciples are very clueless a lot of times um, where Jesus tells them over and over, I am the Messiah. And they just, like, they don't understand. And yet here's Mary, um, and she is anointing him. She understands that he is the Messiah, the anointed one, and anoints him to show that she knows who he is, to prepare him for his burial that is to come. Some people are extravagant only to draw attention to themselves, but Mary's extravagance draws attention only to Jesus. I think as disciples of Jesus, we are also called to be extravagant in selfless love. We are to be extravagant in our love for Jesus, to spend time with Jesus and worship and prayer, to talk to Jesus. Because of our love for Jesus, to spend money on things and organizations and giving and things that honor Jesus. We're called to be extravagant in our love for our families. The way we do words of love, acts of service, extravagant things that are important to show love to the other ones around us. Not to prove to outside people, like, look at how great of a parent I am, but to show true love to the people who are in our lives. And I think we're also called as disciples to show love, extravagant love for the world. Through art, through music, through things like seeing people in need as whole people, humans who need more than just the necessities. We see the beauty and the benefit of having more than just the necessities in our own lives. And being able to offer that extravagant gift to others in need as well is such a blessing. One way to consider that right now is we're still in our last, like what, week of um, collecting for the, uh, for the food shelf. Oftentimes, food shelves don't have, like, dessert items. Because people think, like, oh, well, someone's hungry. Like, we're going to get them the basics, just the necessities. But if you don't have enough food regularly, you might still love chocolate. You might still want to bake a birthday cake for your kid. So sometimes offering something that's a little bit more than just the necessities makes a difference. There are a number of organizations, um, particularly in bigger cities where there are larger homeless populations, um, that offer things like haircuts to people who are homeless, which isn't something they need, right? But it's a way to, to see their humanity and to value it and to know that sometimes it feels great to like feel good about yourself and your body, that we can be extravagant in the ways that we share love and value people. 
extravagant in sharing joy and fun and love. Now, we will each be extravagant in our own way. Some of you probably have nice couches in your house. That is great, and I would like to come to your house and sit on your comfy couch. But we will each be extravagant in our own way based on who we are and what's important to us and what we love. And when done with selfless love, our extravagance can be such a blessing to the world. Not just to us, not just to people who are very near to us and close to us, but a blessing to the world. Signs of discipleship and trust that God provides for us and helps us to show God's abundant love to the world. So I think God has called us to live extravagantly because we love extravagantly. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is number 583, Take My Life That I May Be. Um, and I chose this hymn uh, because it talks, I, I think, about the ways that we um, share all of who we are um, with the world. Um, and that uh, particularly today, you, I invite you to think about how God takes you as you are to live extravagantly for the sake of the world. So let's sing. I invite you to stand for the prayers. There it is. Draw close to the heart of God. We offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Do a new thing in all churches, O oh Lord. Free us from paradigms and no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Lord, in your mercy. Do a new thing for creation, O oh Lord. Reverse the direction of climate change and environmental difficulties. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Lord, in your mercy. 
Do a new thing in the world, O oh Lord. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. End the violence in Ukraine and come to the aid of those who suffer so terribly. Lord, in your mercy. Do a new thing for those who suffer, O oh Lord. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those who are experiencing homelessness and addiction, and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick. Today we pray, especially for Brenda Smith, Craig Bren, Rick Nelson, Anita Omit, the family of Beverly Polarowski on her death, those in care centers, those who serve our nation, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Do a new thing within us, O Lord. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of division and prejudice. Lord, in your mercy. Accept the prayers that we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Margaret. May the extravagant love of the Lord be with you. Let's share God's love with one another. There are lots of announcements. Uh, go ahead and we'll take the offering here at the same time. Um, lots of announcements in the bulletin. I invite you to read those and also take note that the newsletter uh, came out. That's always carefully prepared so that all, all of our folks in the church family and beyond may know what's happening in this congregation and be involved and lift up in your prayers. I uh, hope you'll come back for one last Wednesday night Lenten service this coming Wednesday night. Uh, and then the Wednesday after that will be during Holy Week. So this will be the last Wednesday night uh, service in the season of Lent. Uh, and then uh, next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and that's the beginning of Holy Week. Palm Sunday, we'll bring up the palm branches, we'll have the kids uh, lead a processional. The Sunday school will be singing in church, I think the three-year-old through second grade at the first service third through sixth at the second service. It'll be a joyous occasion on Palm Sunday, and then we enter Holy Week uh, with Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and uh, Easter Vigil. Stephen Ministry is still looking for those who would begin training. Stephen Ministry uh, is a program in our church that looks for compassionate, loving people uh, who listen well in the sense of faith and can help those who are going through temporary uh, struggles in their lives, uh, hours go into the training that uh, really make us better human beings too, that go beyond what we do here at church. So consider uh, Stephen Ministry uh, training. Let us know any time if you'd be willing to be a part of that. Good Earth Village is a great camp close to us. Not only do we send our kids there, but they need counselors in a big way at this time. Uh, with COVID happening the last couple of years, they've lost a lot of their returning counselors. So they're really back to the basics and trying to gather as many college-age students as possible. Uh, and so if you know of someone uh, who is in that age group that would uh, enjoy working at a camp, sharing their faith in a simple way with kids, building their leadership skills, uh, please uh, pass that word along. Good Earth Village in Spring Valley. Um, today we have Holy Communion, and all are invited to participate. You can either kneel at the altar railing, or you can stand at the altar railing as we uh, get back to a little bit of the normal ways of doing uh, communion. 
let the servers know if you want a gluten-free wafer or juice instead of wine. Any other announcements, Pastor Nissa, that I should mention? Great. Uh, I think we still need some soups and desserts for this coming Wednesday. Sign-up list is in the uh, gathering area there. So, with that said, I invite you to stand as we receive the offering, and let's sing a song. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, O God, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, all signs of your gracious love for us. Receive them for the sake of the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And let us gather around the Lord's table, and together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing some hymns. Uh, We'll be standing or kneeling at the altar railing today. There'll be baskets at the end of each row for you to put your dirty cups in.
I invite you to stand for the blessings. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Jesus, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. Go in peace and serve the Lord.